What's good, Coach Colin Castell here with Shot Mechanics Basketball. Today, I'm going to teach you how to do a Euro step safely. All right, so the Euro step is a great move that a lot of players are utilizing to torch defense, whether it's in the half court or on the fast break. Now, the issue with it is sometimes it can be a little bit unsafe if it's not done properly. So today, I want to break it down kind of to those fine details to make sure that number one, you're doing an effective Euro step, and number two, that you're doing a safe Euro step. But before I jump into it, I want to give you a free copy of my number one scoring workout. This is a scoring workout that's going to change the way you think about your training and probably increase your scoring average the very first time you try it. So all you got to do is click the very first link in the description down below to get free access to it right now. So go ahead and do that before we get started. Now, as we jump into a Euro step, the first thing we want to think about is staying low and quick. Low and quick. Now, one of the biggest mistakes that a lot of players make is when they're doing their Euro step and they're trying to move that lateral side to side, is they're really hard on their feet and hard on their knees and hard on their joints. So a lot of times what we'll see is a player will come in and they'll go to maybe Euro step one direction and then come back out the opposite way. When they go, they go really high and hard, which we don't want to be. We don't want to be high and hard. So they come in and they do a big jump like that where they're going up into the air, coming down and slamming onto their foot. Now, the reason why this isn't good is because if you're moving full speed, especially in like a transition situation or something like that, if you're jumping high and landing hard, that's a lot of momentum and a lot of power for your body to absorb and then go off of. We see a lot of times knee injuries happen off this. We see ankle injuries happen off this. So instead, you want to make sure that you're staying low and quick. So not high and hard, we want to stay low and quick. So as I'm coming through, instead of going up onto my first jump, my first little step is a low step. It's almost like my body's shooting downwards into my step. So I'm going down, that way I can Euro step back out the opposite direction. That's gonna keep it safer on your joints, it's gonna keep you lighter on your feet. So not only is it gonna be more effective because it's gonna be faster, but it's also gonna be safer on your joints. So stay low and quick rather than high and hard. Now a great way to think about your Euro step is to hear the sound of it. And that's a great way to figure out if you've got a good one or a bad one. So I just talked about high and hard is what we don't want. And the sound can tell you a lot about that. So we want squeaks, not thuds. And what I mean by that is, as I'm coming in to do my Euro step, if I hear a thud, thud, that means we're going too hard and we're going too high. Instead, we want to hear squeak, squeak, where I'm coming in and I'm getting a squeak from the sneaker, squeak from the sneaker. That tells me that our heels are off of the ground, we're absorbing contact safely and easily, and it's keeping it light and loose on our joints, right? So the, the main key is whenever you're working on this, whether it's a drill, whether it's in practice, whatever it is, be attuned to the sounds that you're making, right? A lot of times the first time I introduce a Euro step, especially if we're in like a group training session or something like that, all over the gym we just hear thud, 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 and it's really hard on the joint. So be listening to the sound. If I can get a squeak here with that first step, if I'm stepping in I get a squeak, that means that I'm absorbing the contact or the, the impact nicely. And then if I can get a squeak on the other side, that means I'm moving quickly out of it as well. So again, keep your heels up, power off the, uh, the balls of your feet or the power pads, that's gonna keep it quicker, it's gonna keep it more efficient, and it's gonna keep it safer. All right, so the next key that you wanna think of is don't lock your legs. Now this is gonna keep it safe because anytime your leg locks, if you're putting some sort of pressure on it, that's a time where we can get an injury. And what I mean by that is as you're getting ready to do your Euro step, if I'm straightening this leg out, as I'm planning, anytime I'm straightening, that's gonna cause that, that kind of pressure, and that's where things can buckle. So a great way to think about a Euro step is we wanna get our shoulders over our knee, our shoulders over our knee. If I come in and my shoulders are back like this, that's really promoting this leg to straighten out and where we can get some issues, right? But if I come in for my Euro step and I put my shoulder over my knee on the first one, it's really hard to keep a straight leg and keep your shoulders forward at the same time. So think about wherever your shoulders go is where your probably knee is going to bend at. So as I come here, boom, I'm getting this bend in the leg. That way it's nice and safe. I'm absorbing that contact and then I can spring off the opposite direction wherever I want to go with it, right? Again, if we can load our shoulders forward, not only does it sell to move better because it looks like I'm moving that direction, but it makes it safer, easier on the impact and things so we can't bend out that leg. Now, the second thing we want to think about is we don't want to bend out the leg on the second step. So as I come through on my Euro step and I get this nice bent, I don't want to plant this second step really hard and straight like this either, because that's another opportunity for injury. And that's what can make the Euro step a little bit dangerous. You really have two opportunities to kind of hurt a joint or bend too hard. So think about keeping it straight, right? I come in, boom, I'm locked and loaded. Boom, I'm locked and loaded just right here, keeping my uh, knee nice and bent, leg ready to spring as soon as it touches the ground. 
because anytime we got locked out, that's a dangerous situation. All right, if this video helps you out, go ahead and hit that like button and then hit the comment section down below and let me know what sort of video you want to see next. This channel for the people, by the people, and I run pretty much everything off request, so leave it down below and hopefully we'll get to it. If you're new to Shop Mechanics, hit that subscribe button. We got videos every week that are going to get you better. And if you want to click the button down here or the link in the description, get a free copy of my number one scoring workout. This is a scoring workout that's going to change the way you think about your training and probably increase your scoring average the very first time you try it. That's how powerful it is. All right, again, I'm Coach Colin Castell with Shot Mechanics Basketball. Thanks for watching, and until next time, splash on.